Hello and welcome to the first training session of the MK Ultra Wideband Kit. My name is Albert and I'll be your host in this session. This session focuses on the integration of MK Ultra Wideband Kit components to your own system. It is divided in four modules as follows. We will start the first module with an overview of the architecture options that the MK Shield offers to connect to an external host. In the second module, we will go through the steps to derive the MK Ultra Wideband SDK through ART from an external host. This includes how to configure the shield and the external host to later run the distance layer demo. In the third module, we will briefly introduce how to port the MK Ultra Wideband SDK to your host controller and go step by step to run the distance layer demo on the ported platform. Finally, we will review what has been presented in this session and introduce the MK Ultra Wideband services. So let's start with an overview of the architecture of the MK Shield. The MK Ultra Wideband Shield 2 features Arduino compatible headers for connection with other development boards. This allows you to use an MCU other than the onboard QN1990 for two different scenarios. In the first scenario, the external host is driving the QN1990 through ART, and the QN1990 is controlling the Ultra Wideband module through SPI. In the second scenario, the difference is that the Ultra Wideband module is controlled directly by the external host and the QN1990 is removed from the architecture. The external host is controlling the Ultra Wideband module through SPI by using the Arduino compatible headers. The jumper configuration allows you to select any of the mentioned scenarios. In the following slides, we will see the detailed configuration and in the next modules, we will run the distance layer demo on each configuration. We will start with the first scenario, which is driving the QN1990 through ART from the external host. In this scenario, the QN1990 is handling the communication for the Ultra Wideband module and the Bluetooth Low Energy Connectivity, while it is driven by the external host. Note that this scenario has no impact on software to be ported when integrating it to your system, as the QN1990 is already handling both Ultra Wideband and BLE modules. To configure the Shield 2 to be driven by an external host through the wired connection, the following jumpers need to be configured. The J2 needs to be set as it is powering the QN1990 on. The J401 jumper needs to be set in position 1C because it is selecting the ultra wideband module to be enabled by the QN1990. The J402 jumper needs to be set in position 1C as well to communicate with the ultra wideband module. By doing so, the ultra wideband signals will be routed to the QN1990. Finally, the J100 will select whether to supply power to the board via USB, battery cell, or an external MCU board. In this figure, we can see which software block is running which platform. The external host is only handling the DLBs, which we will explain in further detail in the next module while the MK Ultra Wideband SDK and the MK Ultra Wideband library are running on the QN1990. Now for the second scenario, we are using the external host to drive the SR40 or SR150 through SPI. In this scenario, the QN1990 is disabled and the required signals are routed to the Arduino pin headers. Note that compared to the first scenario, there is an impact on the software to be ported. For instance, the MK Ultra Wideband SDK platform port layer and the NXP Ultra Wideband middleware port. You can refer to the MK Ultra Wideband SDK porting guidelines document that is delivered with the MK Ultra Wideband Kit USB for a detailed guide of the APIs that need to be ported and the structure of the project. The document is limited to the MK Ultra Wideband SDK platform layer. To configure the Shield 2 to allow the external host to control the Ultra Wideband module through SPI, the following jumpers need to be configured. The J2 needs to be removed as the QN1990 will be powered off. The J401 jumper needs to be set in position 2C because it is selecting the Ultra Wideband module to be enabled by the external MCU port. The J402 jumper needs to be set in position 2C as well to communicate with the Ultra Wideband module, that is, to route the signals required for the communication with the Ultra Wideband module to the Arduino pin header. Finally, the J100 will be set to position 4.5 to select the external MCU board to supply power. Compared to the previous block diagram, the Scenario 2 runs the MK Ultra Wideband SDK and MK Ultra Wideband library on the external host that is driving the SR40 or 150 through SPI. That is, the functionalities that were run on the QN1990 before are now run on the external host. Moreover, a second external host can drive it too through the TLB layer. 